Hey everyone, Stephen Fincher here, pastor at St. Paul United Methodist Church. It is a privilege to be joining you virtually during Holy Week in this strange time that we're in for the coronavirus. Uh, I'm married to Laura, who is my wife of almost five years now. Laura works part-time as a manager at the Franklin County Farmer's Market. We have a one-year-old daughter named Caroline, and we have been living in the Frankfurt community now for about nine months. I am so grateful for this opportunity to join you, and I'm grateful for your church. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but First Methodist was instrumental in helping plant St. Paul United Methodist Church, and any good that God has done through St. Paul in some way can be attributed to the generosity and leadership of your forebears. So we are grateful for your church, not only in the past, but also what you are doing today. Uh, you have wonderful leadership in Pastor Phil and in Tanya. I'm grateful to David Goins, who I'm sure is logging in a lot of hours, pulling together all these videos and editing them. And I'm grateful for the many ways that your church serves Jesus in the Frankfurt community and beyond. There's a lot of things, a lot of ministries that you do that make Jesus smile. So thank you for the invitation, and it is a privilege to be sharing with you today. Now today is Maundy Thursday, and that word Maundy is not a word that we use ever. Uh, it comes from the Latin word mandatum, and mandatum means command. And in John chapter 13, verse 34, that word is used. Jesus says, a new command, mandatum, I give you. Love each other as I have loved you, and by this the world will know that you are my disciples if you love each other. And so Maundy Thursday is that time during Holy Week where typically churches remember, uh, remember Jesus washing the disciples' feet. It's a time where churches often celebrate Holy Communion, the institution of the Lord's Supper, uh, and it's a time of where we focus on love. Now, I'm not going to read from John 13, but I am going to examine the love command from a little bit of a different place. And if you've been in church for any amount of time, this passage that I'm about to read to you is familiar to you. So I'm going to read to you from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. So I invite you to hear God's word. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one, and there is no other but Him. To love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that He had answered wisely, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask Him any more questions. I'd like to entitle this brief meditation, Love in the Fire. In a Bible study that I was leading a few years ago on the Gospel of Mark, I was struck by how tense chapters 11 through 12 are. In fact, it seems like when Jesus gets into Jerusalem, he goes into one conflict after another. And so in chapter 11, that's Palm Sunday, people cut down branches, they throw their cloaks on the ground. Jesus rides in on a donkey as people sing Hosanna, and they hail Jesus as the anointed deliverer of God's people, the Messiah, the King that was coming. But pretty much right after that, Jesus starts causing a stir. He turns over tables in the temple. People start questioning his authority. Who gave you authority to do anything like this? Jesus teaches the parable of the tenants, which is a direct criticism of the religious leaders of his day. 
And then they start trying to trick him or trap him in very difficult problems. They ask him about paying taxes to Caesar. Is that right? Is that something that God would bless? What do you say? They ask him about marriage at the resurrection. Is, is that right? What do you say? What do you think happens, Jesus? They ask him all these questions, trying to trap him, trying to trick him. And in the midst of these debates, right after all that, we have this teacher of the law asking Jesus, what's the most important command? And I think it's important to realize the context into which this teaching is given, because so many times, at least me personally, I like to think that Jesus is in a meadow somewhere or on a mountaintop. Everyone's holding hands and singing kumbaya and just full of love for each other as Jesus talks about loving God with everything and loving neighbor as self. But the reality is, is that Jesus speaks this word in the midst of the fire, in the midst of people confronting him, in the midst of conflict and tension. And often our love gets tested and what we love is most fully on display in times of confrontation, conflict, and tension. Have you ever wondered or wished that Jesus would have said something else to this question? Have you ever wished that Jesus would have said something like, you know, the most important thing is just to give God a little bit of time, just a little bit of time, or maybe tithe your money or, or whatever. Just give God a little bit and you can do whatever the heck you want with the rest of your life. Or maybe we wish Jesus would have said, just believe the right stuff and think all the right stuff. Have all this in your head where you can speak all this flowery language and precise language about God, but you live a totally... Uh, different lifestyle that's divorced from your thoughts and all your words about God. You don't walk your talk. Uh, just as long as you can talk well about God, that's all that matters. Or maybe we wish Jesus would have said something like, just be super spiritual. Just pray all the time, but turn off your brain. You know, uh, don't think too hard. Uh, just follow your feelings. Follow your heart. Jesus doesn't say any of that, but he calls us to love this intimate word, this word of commitment and loyalty. And Jesus, by his cross, demonstrates to us just what holy love looks like. And he tells us that, yes, God has loved us with all that he is, but we are called to love God with everything we have in return, that God longs to be loved with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Everything that we have is meant to be devoted and committed in a love relationship with God, but not only to God, but also we are to love neighbor as self, that we are to think about our neighbors, we are to think about those who are around us, and think about what would I want if I were in their shoes, if I were in their situation. And in the midst of the fires of life, these two things are forever meant to be held together. Now, as a Methodist, we have lingo that we use sometimes, and just from uh, me as a Methodist pastor, and I know this is a Methodist church where this video will be broadcast, but I know that not everyone who watches is Methodist. One of the phrases or some of the lingo that we use are works of piety and works of mercy. And these can be ways of understanding what it looks like to love God and to love neighbor. Works of piety, we might call them spiritual disciplines or practices. It's, it gets at this idea that there are certain spiritual practices we do, these means of grace where we better connect with God, where God pours his grace more and more into our lives, and we are more shaped and empowered by the Holy Spirit because of these things. And so works of piety are things like prayer, uh, worshiping God in prayer, pouring our hearts out to God in prayer, listening to God in prayer. There are things like Bible study, letting the word of God shape our minds, shape our hearts, hearts shape our lives so that we live in accordance with God's will. There are things like fasting or getting together for corporate worship. All of those can be ways that we practice works of piety and we love God. Works of mercy tend to be focused more on our neighbor, and they can be things like feeding the hungry, bringing healing to the sick, encouraging someone who's going through a hard time, right? Uh, sharpening or correcting someone who may be going astray in one form or another. It's focused on how do we treat others. It's not about me and Jesus and my personal relationship with him only. It's about how I treat my neighbor as well. And these two things go together. 
That's the heart of it all. Love God, love neighbor, everything else is just commentary. So for you and for me, as we, uh, on this Holy Maundy Thursday, think about our lives. What do we love? Who do we love? In the midst of the fire, in the midst of conflict or tension, when those things and those stresses come upon us, what is revealed that we truly love? And we are invited to be more and more devoted to Jesus, even in the midst of tension and conflict when the chips are down in our lives. As we journey to the cross and the horror and the shame and the pain that it is, and as we journey towards the joy and the life and the light of the resurrection, my prayer for us is that we would be people who love God and love others well in the midst of the fire. God bless you. Thanks so much for watching.